Oh look, another pre-built gaming PC. But you know what makes this PC different from all of the other pre-built systems? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. This thing is exactly the same as the other 240 million pre-built systems that were sold in 2023. And I'd venture to guess that there's probably a few of you who have a pretty similar system and you might wish that you had something that was, you know, a little bit more unique. So today we are going to take this standard pre-built system and we're going to turn it into something that makes your friends jealous when they see it. And at the same time, we're going to upgrade this thing a little bit. Welcome back to the PC Rehab and the third episode of season two of the Build Up Challenge, the series where we build and sell gaming PCs so that we can save up those profits to eventually get to the point where we build a top tier gaming PC that I'm just gonna give to you. And for a quick recap on where we stand in total funds, we were able to sell the first two gaming PCs that we built in this season. And we have a total of $441 in our bank, which is our budget for transforming this really awesome gaming PC right here. Sarcasm. So let's go over what we have here. This is your very standard I buy power gaming PC that you can purchase from places like Walmart, Best Buy, and you can pick them up on Amazon. And this computer actually sold brand new for $800. And what did you get? for that $800? Well, I am so happy that you asked because inside of this case here, we have a Gigabyte B460M MATX motherboard, a humongous eight gigs of DDR4 3000 megahertz RAM, an i7 10400F CPU with a very pretty deep cool CPU cooler, 250 gig SATA SSD, a one terabyte HDD, and what I'm gonna assume is probably a 500 watt power supply. And for the graphics card, what you're seeing inside of the system right now is actually not what this system came with. When this system sold brand new, it had an Nvidia 1650 Super inside of here. And that's the exact card that was given to me when I purchased this system from somebody on Facebook Marketplace. Now, I didn't want a 1650 Super graphics card, so I took that thing out and I listed it on Facebook Marketplace and I sold it for 70 bucks, which is actually a pretty good deal for the person who picked that up. And for the exact same price, I picked up a 5600 XT graphics card, which is like a 20 to 30% boost in performance over the 1650. So I think as far as upgrades for our system, we are already on the right track. This thing was like the pandemic boredom killer. $800, so much power. Now, just like in every episode of the Build Up Challenge, we will go over the total cost of what it took to build our gaming PC, as well as where we stand in total funds to build the top tier gaming PC that is gonna belong to one of you. But before we can do any of that, we do need to work some magic on this system right here so that I can show you that if, if you have an ugly system like this, it doesn't have to stay that way. We can change it. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So my original plan of how to structure this video was to just have the disassembly of the pre-built system roll straight into the building of the new system without me interrupting. But unfortunately we ran into an issue. 
And that issue is with this power supply right here. I wrongfully assumed that there was going to be a 500 watt power supply in that pre-built system because that just made sense in my mind. But unfortunately, you only get a 400 watt power supply with that pre-built system, which is like bare minimum of what you would have needed to run that pre-built with the 1650 Super Graphics card that was in the system originally. But we are upgrading to a 5600 XT graphics card, which pulls more wattage. So we're gonna need at least a minimum of 500 watts to make sure that the computer that we're building works properly. So I do have this Airs game 500 watt power supply that I've had sitting in my closet. So we're gonna throw this in here instead of using that 400 watt power supply because it's just not gonna cut it. So now that I've explained that to you, let's get back into the build.
I probably should have said this earlier in the video, but I am very well aware that you can buy some very nice looking pre-built systems, even though you are going to be paying a serious premium for those computers. And because of that premium, that's why you find that the majority of pre-built systems that are bought look like how this system used to look. And I'm gonna be completely dead honest with you. If I had a choice between this computer and what this computer used to look like, I'm gonna pick this every single time. But this whole experiment just goes to show you that if you are sick and tired of your current setup and you don't have the money it would take to buy a brand new system, you can always put a little bit of money into your current system to completely change the way it looks and upgrade it at the exact same time. Now we are going to go over the total cost of what it took to make this PC a reality, but before we go ahead and do that, I did want to show you some of the gameplay footage that we were able to capture from this system, and forewarning, I pushed this computer to its absolute limits. So in Battlefield 2042, at a high preset, we were getting an average of 72 FPS. In Helldivers, also at a high preset, we were getting an average of 66 FPS. In Horizon Zero Dawn, at an ultra preset, we were getting an average of 72 FPS, which was really awesome to see. And lastly, we tested the first Descendants, and even though this game is a very intense game to run, at a high preset, we were getting an average of 56 FPS. Now, like I said, I pushed this system very hard and I was playing some pretty intense games and I had the settings set pretty high because I wanted to really see how far we could push this older hardware and the system did not disappoint. We were able to get extremely good gameplay at extremely high settings and the gameplay looked and felt really, really great. Now, there are a couple things that I did want to address about the system that I'm sure somebody in the comments has already said, starting with the 10 400 F CPU, it does not need an AIO. I put an AIO in here for selfish reasons. I kind of just wanted to see just if you could put it in here and how much space we really had left over at the end. Plus, inside of this little box, we do have a full 3.5 inch hard drive and a SATA SSD. We really crammed a whole lot of hardware in such a tiny box. And the other thing I wanted to say before we get into totals is the cable extension. It is just a leftover cable extension that I had sitting around, so I'm trying to get rid of those cable extensions because I have so many of them. So that's free. I'm not adding that into the total cost of the build just because I, I gotta get rid of them. I have hundreds of them. But now that I've mentioned totals, let's go over the total cost of what it took us to transform that ugly pre-built into this beautiful gaming PC right here. Let me grab my phone because all of my totals are on my phone. So for the original system with the 1650 Super, I was able to pick that up on Facebook Marketplace for only $220, which is a pretty decent deal for the hardware that we got. And I sold the 1650 Super for $70 and for $70, I picked up the 5600 XT, which gave us a pretty decent graphic performance increase. And for everything else, the case, the RAM, the AIO, the unexpected power supply change, it cost me $229 to transform that pre-built system into this. And that brings our total to $449, which puts us over budget by eight bucks. It really sucks that we are over budget, guys. I was so disappointed when I pulled out that power supply and saw that it was only 400 watts. I mean, it really just goes to show you that when you buy a pre-built system like that, they are giving you the absolute bare minimum of what is required to make that system work. And it's one of the many reasons why I would never buy a pre-built system ever. But because we had to go over budget, our new grand total of what we have in our bank is actually negative $8, which really sucks. But we still have to sell this system right here. And I'm going to put a price tag on this system of $600. And hopefully after some negotiations, we'll end up with like $540, $560, which is a pretty decent amount of money made from this unit right here. Plus, we got to teach people that if you have an ugly system and you don't want it to be ugly anymore, you can change it. 
So I would be super upset with myself if I didn't remind you that if you want a chance to win the grand finale computer that we're going to be building at the end of this season, then you're going to need to make sure that you are a member of the PC Rehab Discord server. I drop a link to join that server in the description down below in every single one of my videos. And you're going to need to make sure that you are a part of that Discord server because I choose the winner from there. And I would be super, super mad if I didn't say that if you had a little bit of fun here with me today, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well as the like button. It helps this channel out tremendously. And I would be super, super, super mad at myself if I didn't say that no matter where you are in the world, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'm gonna see you right here for the next video.